So these are the Gershman Studio 2. They are bookshelf speakers. They're not super cheap. I guess when you compare it to like really expensive audio equipment, they are. Uh, but I guess that depends on your price range and what expensive is to you. You can go to an audio show and see bookshelf speakers that are $50,000. You can see bookshelf speakers that are $500. These are, I think, around $3,650, something in that range. And man, they do some interesting things. I've always been into speakers. Uh, I've always been a speaker guy. I've been listening to speakers and uh, trading them and just, you know, all kinds of random stuff way longer than I've been doing headphone reviews. But I've never done that many speaker reviews on YouTube. I have on some independent websites, but that's, you know, that's not right here. And speakers I find are different when it comes to reviews. Unless a speaker really has a negative trait, it's hard to say bad things about a speaker. In fact, most of the time when you review a speaker, it comes down to what does this do better that other things don't do the same way. Butter, butter. Everything that comes out of these speakers sounds buttery smooth. Insanely buttery smooth. When what's interesting about that is normally when I think of a speaker that's buttery smooth, I think of something that is warm. I think of like uh, sweet or recessed highs or something a little bit dark and relaxed. No, these are not dark. They're not warm. In fact, the treble is its pretty far up there. Everything feels like it's in balance. Um, and in some cases, these can be brighter sounding than my Vandersteens, but at the same time, they retain a sweetness to the highs. Nothing is piercing no matter how much it might push up. And it's added an interesting level of resolution to high frequencies. But I guess let's start with the build of these things and move through as if I was doing a normal headphone review. So these are pretty big speakers. I'm almost positive that's a, a eight inch driver on the bottom. Uh, they're two way speakers. You cannot buy amp them because there is a built in crossover on these, but they are built like tanks. Look at the surround on this woofer. This thing moves a lot of air, which is interesting because this is a sealed bookshelf speaker. It's part of why the speaker is so large and so deep, because it is sealed. And there are benefits to that. The main benefit being that it's not very sensitive to room placement. You can put it closer to a wall if you need to than something with a rear port. Uh, I moved these about five or six inches farther back than I would normally have towers or bookshelves out in the room. And I have them on a set of Kanto stands, big heavy duty metal stands. These are the same stands that I put the SVS Ultra bookshelves on, which are a little bit smaller than these as far as the front dimensions are concerned, but nowhere near as deep. And those are a ported speaker. Whereas, like I said, these are sealed. I find that sealed speakers like this tend to have to move a little bit more air to get low end and sometimes can be a little bit more boomy or have bloom in certain areas, but these don't. So let's get into frequency response. Now I haven't measured these out in the room. I'm actually just going by ear for this review because I'm moving and I packed up all my measurement equipment. But hey, after this many years of measuring and listening to things, I think I trust my ears pretty well. So there is no bloom or bloat or mud or warmth in the low end on this. The very, very low sub bass does push up surprisingly well and doesn't seem to roll off hardly at all. These hit very low notes with a lot of impact, but without it sounding boosted or bloated, which I found very, very impressive. And it didn't seem to be affected by how close I put them to the wall. They sounded great near field. They sounded great far out. It always retained excellent impact and extension. The low end is very full bodied, but certainly not boosted. Like I said, there's no bloom, there's no bloat. It just sounds very well rounded and neutral. And the mid range was absolutely lush. Uh, I was picking out exceptional details in male and female vocals, pushing into the upper mid range. And the highs are just as sweet as can be. There are tracks where, like in the song Flutes by Hot Ship, I'd listened to that a million times on my Magnapans and on my Vandersteens, and I'd never heard that there was laughter in the background the entire time in the beginning of that track. Yet with these, it rang throughout the room. There were other songs where I heard seagulls in the songs, and I paused it and thought, what in the world are seagulls doing in Tennessee in the winter? These are some of the most buttery smooth speakers I've heard in a very long time. Now, don't get me wrong, I've heard things that are more impressive, but not at $3,500, $3,600-ish. Usually those are the insane things that you hear at Rocky Mountain Audio Fest, 
like in the Alsa Vox room, which was insane, or the Vandersteen room, or actually, believe it or not, Polk Audio made a pretty crazy demo last year with their new um, reiteration of the SDAs. That was pretty wicked. I think it's SDA. I hope I didn't say the wrong thing there. Uh, moving forward, though, that's not all they do, as impressive as it was. That separation made an insane difference in bringing out details I hadn't heard, but these also really, really, really do depth and imaging. Now, I know the person who brought these by um, talked a lot about the soundstage of these speakers, and they do have very good soundstage. It's not like crazy out there. Um, you can obviously space the speakers wider to increase the staging, but at a normal placement, the soundstage isn't crazy wide, but it is a very realistic sounding soundstage. But the depth backwards into the music in front of me, the stage it's created forward, was exceptionally deep, and it didn't seem to have a limit. There are some songs where it would push back, and I would hear sounds that sounded like the wall was completely gone in my room. And it seems like no matter how far back this stage would go, it would maintain excellent imaging and clarity for sounds that were extremely distant. It's almost like having supersonic hearing at a concert, it felt like, only with something much higher quality than line array speakers. It's as if you can sit in front of a stage, let's say there's like a guitarist playing, and you can hear the stage, you can hear everything there. It sounds like you're right in front of the stage of this guitarist playing, but if you focus on it, it sounds almost like you can put your ear right next to the guitar and listen to the individual strings vibrating right next to you and the air moving across them. And somehow it can do that and still sound like a stage in front of you at the same time. It's like sitting somewhere and having supersonic hearing in a real life venue. And that is what made this an exceptionally pleasant experience. I have to give these back and oh, I don't want to, but I'm moving and I don't need more speakers. If I didn't already have like 30 sets of towers and bookshelves, I would probably buy a set of these. I feel like I'm having a Zeos moment with like these being like, God, these, these, but really they are incredible. They're absolutely incredible. Um, these were brought to me by Colin from Gestalt Audio Design. Is it Gestalt? Does it Gestalt? I don't know. He left his card here. It's a hi-fi store in Nashville, and he was kind enough to let me borrow these for a little while, as well as this giant Luxman amp to power them. So show them a little bit of love. He told me that he ships things all over the country, so I will put his website right here on the screen for you guys to check it out. Now let's talk about power. These are a six ohm speaker that can take 200 to 40 watts, according to the website. Now that's gonna vary greatly depending on what kind of amp you have. I was powering these on my Rotel and the Rotel sounded great, but when he brought over this Luxman, it completely changed the game. The speakers certainly benefited from the change in amplification and I tried these on a variety of things. I tried them on some Emotiva monoblocks. I tried them like I said on my Rotel, on a Denon receiver and a few other things. And I enjoyed them on absolutely everything I tried them on. And I actually did, just to make sure I'm not crazy, try a lot of my other speakers here on the Rotel and Luxman side by side to compare them. But the quality difference in amplification really did shine through on these speakers much more than the other ones. Now I could put these on a amp like my Rotel um, or another affordable amp and be perfectly happy with the sound, but the difference when I put them on the Luxman was really what took it from being incredibly lifelike to being just real life. And the most interesting thing about how these sound with that amp is their ability to be incredibly sharp and impactful, yet still very relaxed and smooth. And it's not like the tone is relaxed and it's not like how their presentation is as relaxed because they're still a very neutral sounding and very articulated and sharp speaker, but it's, I guess the best way I can describe it is that they're not fatiguing these speakers would take ages to be fatiguing because they're just so buttery smooth. Now, you're not gonna be blasting these at insane volumes because they're a sealed speaker and this driver has to move a lot to hit low notes. And the last thing I think you'd want to do is bottom out and blow up this beautiful driver. 
you can definitely still rock the house, but if you're someone who wants to crank up to the points of hearing damage that you can get with some other speakers, I wouldn't recommend doing that. So on that note, I would say this is more of a speaker for someone who likes to listen at a reasonable to maybe sometimes loud volume. Uh, not necessarily for someone who likes to enjoy movies on their home theater system at good volumes, because I could imagine the um, big rumbles and things that are present in a lot of movies these days. Uh, I would worry a little bit about this lower driver in situations like that. In that kind of situation, I'm much more comfortable using an SVS with some subs. Because the SVSs, you can just crank them to oblivion and throw them all the low end they want and they'll just take the abuse. I feel like these, they probably could take some abuse, but I don't want to test that because they're so nice. This would be like going drifting in a luxury SUV. So, conclusion. These are pretty awesome. Um, I want them. I can't get them right now, but I want them. They're pretty amazing. Super buttery smooth. Reasonably loud, but with a lot of excursion on the low end. Couldn't find distortion for the life of me. Excellent depth imaging and a brutally amazing separation and smooth highs. Gershman Studio 2. So guys, I hope you liked this video. If you did, please leave a like down below and a comment. Let me know what you want to see in the future. If you want to get active in the community, you can at forum.highflyguides.com. Don't forget to show Colin some love over here for sending me these speakers. I really appreciate it, Colin. Like I said, he sells speakers out of Nashville and he can ship them, I think he said pretty much anywhere in the country, so that's nice. And as always, don't forget to stick around and subscribe for more videos like this in the future. Until the next one, guys. Peace.